In today's guided tour, I'm going to walk you through the process of estimating a commercial security project, starting with uploading plans, performing an on-screen takeoff, and building a customer-facing quote. We'll get started on the estimating dashboard where you can see all of your current projects in the various stages of the estimating and operational life cycle. We have a project set up that we can access by clicking the name, which takes us to the project details page where we'll enter the project name, description, due date, and all the relevant customer details. We can also create project specific notes and tasks so we don't forget any details later on. Now let's upload some plans by clicking the plans tab from the navigation bar and then click add plans. Click file upload and browse to the file location and double click the file, which can be either a PDF or image file, which begins the upload process. Depending on the size of the file, this could take anywhere from a few seconds to a few minutes to complete. You can now see a new folder containing the plans that can be renamed are expanded to view the individual sheets within the plan set. You can rename the sheets manually or automatically by clicking the auto rename button and selecting the name of the plan from the bottom right hand corner. Assuming the name is in the same place on all the sheets, it will rename all the sheets automatically. We can now delete, rotate, or organize our sheets into individual folders to streamline the takeoff process. Now let's click takeoff on the navigation bar to begin the process of counting cameras, doors, and measuring cable runs on the plans we've uploaded and renamed in the previous step. Before we start, let's cover some of the basic mouse functions for navigating around the plan. To pan, click and hold with your mouse and move the plan around to a desired location and you can use your mouse wheel to zoom in and out. And at the top of the plan, you can navigate between sheets using the drop down list to select the desired plan by name. Before we begin our takeoff, we'll want to set a plan scale using one of our common architectural or civil scales or by manually setting the scale using a known distance such as a three foot doorway. In our example today, we'll use the common 1 8 inch equals a foot scale that is depicted on the drawing. Now that we've set our scale, let's add a few takeoffs for this project by clicking Add New Takeoff. This brings up a searchable dialog box that we can use to query our out-of-the-box database, your very own custom database, or you can simply type in the name of a part that does not already exist in the database to begin your takeoff. In our example, we'll click Catalog, browse to the Low Voltage folder, select Security, and then we'll select a couple of different devices, starting with a 5 megapixel interior camera, surveillance server, card reader, and an access door electric strike assembly. Once you've chosen your desired items, click Select, and now we'll want to adjust the takeoff type, symbol, and color for each of the selected items that will be used to identify the item on our takeoff. Now click Add to Plan, and this puts you in takeoff mode, with the item on top selected by default. You can tell which item is in takeoff mode because it's highlighted with a blue circle, and you'll notice your cursor has changed to a crosshair, and you are now ready to begin counting. Let's go ahead and start the takeoff process by counting the interior cameras. Now you can go through and manually count one by one by hovering your mouse over the item and clicking. But in this example, we're going to use SDCOM's auto count feature to speed up the process. To begin the auto count process, click the auto count icon and using your mouse, select the area around the symbol. You can use the handles to resize the selection or if everything looks good, click the check mark. A dialog box will appear that gives you the option to search all plans, the active plan, or manually select the plans from your list. In this example, we want to search the active plan, so we'll leave it selected and click run auto count to begin the process. 
With the auto count feature, you can easily count hundreds or thousands of symbols from multiple plan sheets in a matter of seconds. The results will be returned to you in a selection dialog box with likely matches already selected. Simply click the symbol to add or remove any unwanted symbols from your counts and then click save and close. Even though we auto counted the cameras, you can still manually add or remove symbols on the plans. Now let's count the access control doors and card readers using the same auto count process. Now that we've counted all of the security devices on our drawing, let's add some items that are not depicted visually. In this example, we'll place our surveillance server in the telecom room. And now let's add a takeoff for our cable runs. SDCOM has a couple of takeoff types that are built specifically for low voltage contractors. One of which is the linear with average takeoff type, which allows us to take sample measurements at a drop distance and multiply it by the number of devices to get our total cable footage. To begin a measurement, single click and drag your mouse across the screen and use single mouse clicks to turn and a double mouse click to end the measurement. If you hold down the shift key, it'll level the lines and only let you turn on 45s or 90s to keep the drawing nice and neat. Lastly, if you make a mistake, hit the backspace key and it removes one segment at a time while measuring. And again, when you get to the end of your measurement, simply double click. You'll notice we're still in takeoff mode and can begin our next measurement. Now let's open up the takeoff properties to add our drop length and adjust the multiplier to equal the total number of access control doors. Now that we have our takeoffs complete, let's organize our project using the group feature by dragging an item up until you see the create group button. We'll then rename the group, in this case cameras, and then we'll create another group called access control and drag all of the relevant devices into that group. Lastly, Let's go ahead and rename the default group to pre-wire. Now let's move over to the estimating section, review our quantities, material pricing, and labor rates. Here you can see our estimate broken out by the grouping we set up earlier with the parts and assemblies displayed with quantities, material cost, total cost, and total labor extended out in hours. We can edit the numbers in blue, and in this example, we'll want to increase our cable counts up to the purchase minimums. On some of the items, you'll notice a blue arrow, which signifies the item is a multi-layered assembly. If you click on the arrow, you can see the subcomponents of the assembly with the material and labor broke out and the appropriate ratios. You can also add items not depicted on the drawing by clicking Add Part. In this example, we want to include some cable support items like J-hooks, as well as project management time for training, creating as-builds, and project handoff. Once the items are back on the estimate, we can set the quantities and adjust the cost or labor. Now I'm going to create a new group called Project Management and drag the new Project Management task to that group. Now that we have our estimates set up, let's move down to the Additional Notes section and review our Scope of Work description inclusions and exclusions, and project-specific notes on payment terms. You can save this information from project to project and update on an as-needed basis. The details here will appear on your customer-facing quote. Below the notes section, we have our summary section where we can enter our fully burdened labor costs based on a composite crew. It in this case is $49.50 per hour. Here you can see the total labor hours for the project and when multiplied by the labor cost per hour gives us our total labor cost for the project. Below that you can see our total material costs and in red the total estimated project costs. We can adjust our profit margin and below we have some additional adjustments that we can make which include overhead and sales tax. At this point we have our sales price, which is depicted here, and we can click Show Bid to review our customer-facing quote. This would include your logo, contact and customer details, 
And as you scroll down, all the inclusions and exclusions that you entered earlier in the project notes section. At the bottom, we have the project totals and taxes broken out with the signature line. And you have a few additional options for breaking the quote out in more or less detail. Now click export bid to download a PDF version that you can forward along to your customer for approval.